Welcome. It is really great to see you. Uh, and today I am joined by uh, Mark Thompson, who is the principal here at Moore College. Uh, Mark, I guess, is my boss. Uh, I'm really glad to, to chat to him. Uh, and we're going to be talking about how things are going at Moore College. So, hi, Mark. Hi, Lionel. Thanks for having me. Mm, it's uh, really great to, uh, to have you. Uh, I, I, in some ways, I just wanted to, to chat to you and to ask about how, how things are going. I've got some sense of it, uh, and from my point of yep. view, I'm thinking things are great, but I'd just like to, to ask you, how are things at Moore College? Well, I, I mean, honestly, it is a, it's a disconcerting and uh, just sort of disorienting moment mm. uh, for people, and there are levels of anxiety within our community, and um, some people are experiencing um, hardship along the way, but in the midst of all of that, there are, there are really, really positive stories, I think. Mm. So we, we don't want to downplay the fact that it really is hard and some people are finding it harder than others. Mm. But at the same time, uh, take some comfort at those really positive things that have been happening. Mm. Mm. Well, it'd be great to hear about those. I, I'd better just, just in case anyone's watching this video off into the future, I'd better just um, add uh, or that the, the situation we're talking about is the COVID-19 restrictions. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, and all, all having to do with so many things online. Uh, so you mentioned yeah. some positive stories. What are, what are some positive things? Uh, positive well, things? what I've actually found most encouraging is hearing the stories of how people are caring for each other uh, in the midst of all of this. So as you say, here is this pandemic and we're all closed down and can't do things the way we'd like to do things, can't actually go out and meet people the way we're used to going out and meeting people. And yet I've, I've heard of people who dropping notes in each other's um, letter boxes just to say, hi, want to join this chat at such and such a time. Uh, people have been leaving little gifts and presents on the doorsteps of, uh, of their friends just to remind them that, you know, they're being cared for and there is a relationship here that they want to keep and preserve. Uh, people have been, you know, leaving little notes around the place for friends. Um, mm -hmm. I've noticed too that people have, uh, early on, there were people singing in the streets. <laughs> That had to stop, but uh, when Jess yeah. and the others were meeting on Little Queen Street and singing together, that was a great thing. Oh, so, it really was. I, I was I was part of that for a bit uh, because it's just around the corner from us. We all lived together in in this uh, area of Newtown, and uh, the singing happened. And um, uh, Ron and I came around and joined in, uh, and that was at the point when we could still do that. Now we can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was wondering who the bass was. So I must be. <laughs> 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 so, but little things like that, which were just very thoughtful, that uh, uh, people are missing being with people. Mm. And so doing something early on that allowed that to happen, we can't do that now, but people have been dropping online messages and, you know, setting up online chat rooms and mm. praying with people online and asking people how they can pray for each other. I mean, those are all really good, positive things. And the interaction between people in one sense has been stepped up. I mean, it hasn't really because you know, in normal circumstances, we just run across each other as we go past each other in the corridor and things like that and say hi. But now we need to be deliberate about it and people are. Mm. And people are praying and all of that is really, really good. Mm. And in the college staff, just watching the, the all hands on deck kind of attitude where people are getting in and doing things that aren't their job, uh, but they're doing them because they want to be able to help people survive this moment, which is such a strange moment for us all. Mm. Uh, that's been good. I've really been encouraged by seeing it. It's, it's just actually a very great testimony to the work of the Spirit of God amongst us, mm. that God focuses our attention on other people rather than ourselves. We, the other-centeredness of this community rather than the self-centeredness of this community has been a great encouragement over these last couple of days, the last couple of weeks. And, and when you say that this, this community, you, you mentioned you, you're speaking about people and that those people include uh, the students here at, at college. Uh, and, yep. the and the staff. The staff. Yeah. yeah. And the faculty. Yes. Uh, yeah. All working together and uh, all seeking for the same end, which is to, to help each other come through this moment, looking forward to that day when we'll be able to come together. Mm, mm. Well, that's a great testimony yep. to the, the work of the Spirit. You, you mentioned uh, that, that you know, uh, members of staff just uh, pitching in and doing things that weren't their, 
normal job. Uh, yeah. What, 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 are, what do you have any examples of that? Or uh, I got um, John Downwood, our um, operations manager, down dealing with uh, the mail and trying to organise, you know, the distribution of mail. Uh, so that people can still get the mail that comes to college and parcels that arrive, just little things like that. Other people cleaning up things that they see around rather than leaving it for others to do that. Um, I've seen people coming into college to actually provide, you know, when, when they could, they came in and left things for other members of staff. Um, that's that, All of that's been really, really good. Mm. Well, that, that backs up my experience that there's just been uh, so much uh, care and love around the place uh, in the midst of all of the, uh, the, the challenges. Uh, yeah, and when you've needed something, and when I've had to ask somebody, could I get some technological help or something like that? Now, it has to come in a different way. It has to come via Zoom or, uh, or through email or something like that rather than somebody sitting down with me. But people taking the time to do that has been really good. So there's been a lot of um, awareness that this is strange and different for some people and helping people to manage that shift has been a really positive thing. Mm. Great. C can you talk about the, the teaching side of things here at college? Uh, so obviously we, there's been a shift in, in the way that we've, a very dramatic shift in the way and the method of teaching. Uh, how, how has that gone and what, uh, what, what's actually happened firstly um, and, and how has that gone? Well, we're delivering our lectures online, so people are live streaming them um, and, and recording them. Uh, we're also um, trying to have interaction, so class interaction via um, uh, Microsoft Teams is the, the platform that we've been using. And uh, all the reports to me have been, despite some little hitches from time to time and internet connections in some places dropping out and then coming back in, there have been those usual teething problems. But apart from that, it's gone very well. And uh, the reaction from both faculty members and from students has been, you know, this, is, this has gone well. It's no substitute for, the, for what we really want to be able to do, but it is, it is working reasonably well. Mm -hmm. And now we're looking at um, what the next step is, because as this rolls on, uh, there'll be um, assessments and other things that will have to be done online. Mm -hmm. But uh, the presentation of material the interchange between students with one another and students with the, uh, the lecturer that's presenting the course um, has been going reasonably well, as far as I've heard. Mm, mm, that's certainly been... Now, you've been doing some of that, haven't you, Lionel, yourself? <laughs> yeah, I have. I've been, uh, I've been amazed at, uh, well, firstly, at how quickly we, we were able to just get this online platform up and running, uh, which I guess is, a, I think, a, a large part of the testament to the IT department uh, here and all the, uh, you know, all, all the, the ways in which they've been able to set it up. Uh, but also the way that the students have adapted to it. And uh, we've got little chats uh, running along the side, which actually makes it much more human. So it's funny, you know, it's not a, it's not a distraction. It's actually, um, it's, it's a, a bit of a, a way of connecting uh, with just a little chat going along the side. Uh, and it's a place to ask questions as well. Uh, but, you know, rather than it just being the, the formal lectures, we're actually, you know, we know each other. Uh, and so we're, we're seeking to, to chat to one another. Uh, and just the way in which uh, people are adapting to uh, how, do I, how do I deal with this uh, material online? Um, uh, how do I, I, I was speaking to someone today, uh, one of the students in our chaplaincy group, who was having, uh, who was saying, uh, now, you know, I, I really like to be able to do different things in a day. You know, the way I work is not by doing the same thing, uh, but doing different things. So he's trying to work out how to adapt to the new situation where everything is all happening in the one place that is on his computer screen. Uh, how does he get up and, and mix things around and, and, uh, and, and they're, they're, they're adapting to it and still learning uh, really well. So I think that's well, one of the, one of the fun things early on was a, was a YouTube clip that was yeah. up about uh, one of our students moving around the house in which he lived in order to do different things in different places, hmm. having morning tea and doing lectures and things like that. And that was just another way in which you could get an insight into how people are responding hmm. to this. It was very positive, I thought. Right, yeah. Excellent. And the other thing I found really good too, Lionel, is that um, it, while this has involved us as a community, as a college community, we haven't just focused on ourselves as a community. There's, there's been looking out as well. So, I mean, that's appropriate too because this is College Mission Week. 
Mm. And so people have been thinking hard about how we might provide resources for people in other places. And, and Simon Gillam has just really worked incredibly hard uh, to help try and bring that together so that we can resource the churches, not just in Sydney, but further afield as well, uh, with the things that we can create during this mission week. Um, and so people thinking beyond our community to how do we help outside, people outside. Um, very early on, I was encouraged by um, one of our students, Tom's a toilet paper evangelism where he met somebody in a shopping centre who was distressed that they couldn't locate toilet paper, so took them uh, to his home and gave them some of his and was able to explain why he did that, because he wanted to share the same sort of generosity and grace that he'd been shown in Christ. Mm. So uh, there's been lots of that sort of thing. Mm. A great great testimony, isn't it, to uh, the way in which because of the gospel, because of God's spirit at work in our lives, we, we do have that, you know, though, it, though it's hard, it's very hard in, in, for many yeah. people, we have that security and we have that peace to be able to say, I, you know, my life is not caught up with having enough toilet paper and I can, I can give it away. Or, I can you know, give or it seriously. away. That's yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Continue to be generous. It's, yeah. it's, it's because you watch around and there are, there are signs of grace and generosity that we see out there side of our community for sure it's not just this community that's like that but there is also a fair bit of self-centeredness that we see around us as well that gets reported on the news uh, some spectacular acts of self-centeredness and so it's a wonderful testimony over against that to see people who are not so preoccupied with themselves uh, that they can't think about the needs of other people mm, yeah that's good. You mentioned Simon uh, Gilliam and, and the whole mission thing. What was great uh, was uh, right from the start, Simon, Simon has never said anything about anything being cancelled. He said, uh, mission yeah. is not cancelled at all. Um, he said, absolutely not. Uh, hardly anything that we do here at college has been cancelled. It's just changed. Uh, and yeah. people are rolling with it and adapting. Uh, do, you, do you have any other examples of, of, of that or, or of the ways in which uh, things well, I think um, chaplaincy groups, uh, our, our fellowship and pastoral care of each other. Um, we haven't abandoned that because we can't meet physically together. Uh, we, those meetings are being held online as well. Uh, we have people who are, you know, we're trying to do mission now in this online environment. People are trying to connect with each other online. So all of this is still happening. It's just in a different mode. College is not closed at all. Um, college is still working. Most of our staff are still working uh, but they're working at home, which brings added stresses and strains for them. Uh, for some of our staff, they can't work at home because, you know, the maintenance of the college buildings has to be done on the college buildings. Uh, so they come in and do some work where they are able. But many of the staff are at home and the faculty are lecturing from their home. So the mode has changed, but the college is still open. We're still giving the lectures. We're still uh, doing all the other things that college does. Uh, the the distance education courses, uh, we've just dropped the price of our PTC, which is our preliminary theological certificate, to try and give an opportunity for people who've got a little bit more time at home, wondering what to do, uh, to, to take up the opportunity to study the Bible while they're doing that. Oh, I would be remiss of me to not uh, give that an opportunity for an ad. So how much is it? Uh, for the, to do uh, that's right. <laughs> yes, the PTC is <laughs> 25 <laughs> Sorry. A word for the sponsor, it's $25 a unit. So the introduction to the Bible unit, which is a great way to start, um, uh, is totally online. $25 gives you the course. You get the, the course material and uh, you're able to actually be part of that and develop your understanding of how the whole Bible fits together. And the great thing about this, I was talking to somebody just before I spoke to you, Lionel, who was saying, well, uh, it's a great alternative to sitting down and binging on Netflix. Mm. Mm. I, I, uh, I mean, that, that PTC course, uh, you, you know, is, is, is such a good one. It was actually the course that I used that prepared me to come here to more college. Uh, so I did it when I was at, at uni uh, and I was able to just, you know, do that, that course over a period. But back then, uh, it was all on paper. Uh, now it's, it's online now. Uh, much of it is the same. Um, it, it's been updated, there's updated materials, but there's a, a, a very similar core. And uh, that is really designed for, for people who are not quite at college, but are able to, you know, to prepare to come to college or just to, to prepare for the ministry and to be deepened uh, in their own uh, Christian service in whatever 
uh, area they're at. So that's well, we've been, we've found over the years many people have come to college who have done the PTC beforehand, mm -hmm. but also churches have been strengthened by people doing the PTC who have never come to college, mm -hmm. as yeah. people have grown in their understanding, deep in their own understanding of Christian faith, and are able to be better prepared to serve in the church where they are. So it's a great resource for the churches, a great way of strengthening individual Christian um, understanding and faith, and a great preparation for some for um, further things in the future. Right. Well, just to round off the ad, that means you've got to go to more. Right, yeah, that's the ads all over. Yep. Thank you. PTC. <laughs> that's right. You can look up distance or look up PTC. It'll be right on the front page uh, because it's. It'll a, be. It'll be on the website. Yeah. The key thing. Um, well, what. Uh, uh, you see sort of any, any challenges ahead? Uh, what, what, uh, what can people pray for when it comes to more college? Well, I think we are, um, we are doing all that we can. And um, as I say, people are making, taking the opportunity to serve each other in this context. But we're all longing for that day when we can come back and uh, meet face to face. And so, of course, pray, pray for the college and the college community that will be able to um, to persevere until that time. Uh, it, it gets hard watching a tele, uh, television screen, a computer screen, um, for hours on end. It brings added strain to you when the one place that you are all day is that one little desk and that one screen is what you're looking at and you move from one meeting to another or one lecture to another. That adds a degree of strain and stress that I don't think we really anticipated. Um, I've spoken to a number of people who found that that's actually created some difficulties for people. So if you could pray that for that, that would be very good. Mm. Uh, it might also be really good if you could pray for uh, people who are thinking about coming to college next year, mm. because this has thrown everybody's thinking about the future way up into the air. Um, and we want to see many more people come. I think, one of the things that's happened over the last little while during this pandemic has been the, the cracks in our culture have opened up wide. We've seen that uh, the self-confidence that we've had and, and the way in which as a culture we thought that we could make ourselves and create our own identity and, and, and stand up for ourselves um, has been shown to be paper thin, really. Mm. And people are asking questions about themselves, about life, the big questions of life. And Christians have something very significant to contribute to that. What I mean by that is that on the other side of this pandemic, we are going to need more people involved in Christian ministry than ever before, because we're going to need to take the gospel to people who desperately need to hear it and are more open to hear it, one prays, uh, than they've been over the last little while. So if you could pray for the people who ought to come to college next year, and ought to be preparing to be part of that push to take the gospel to an even more needy world uh, over the next few years. That would be terrific. Mm, mm, that's definitely something to, to pray for. Absolutely. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to, to, to add about uh, how things are going? Well, I think um, I've been, I spend my life going from one meeting to another to another. So I'm Zoom here and Zoom there and uh, Microsoft Teams here and Microsoft Teams there. Um, and what's been interesting is to see that people who are, have been um, locked in their houses virtually um, have found even being able to talk with others in this medium uh, to be a great encouragement. So I'm encouraged that people aren't despairing. So as I said right at the beginning, some, some people find it very hard, but people aren't despairing and they're taking opportunity to encourage others, but to be encouraged themselves by meeting with each other. Um, in this in this way and we're looking forward to that day when we have a wonderful celebration that uh, this is over and we can get together again I'm, I'm looking forward to that mm, great. well thanks very much mark i appreciate your time and i appreciate you doing one more zoom this is obviously a zoom yeah. interview or a zoom discussion yeah. uh, so thank you very much for doing that and at the end uh, of all this, I'm going to be a Zoom expert, I think. Yes, that's it. We did actually see each other, uh, you, you and I, I was, I was walking with Bronwyn, my wife, um, very much on the other side of the road while we were doing our legitimate exercise. And you were yes. walking very much on the other side of the road while you were doing your legitimate exercise. Uh, and so we waved. Uh, <laughs> that's right. So I, I know you're still around. You're not just a face on the screen. Exactly. That's right. But it'll be good to see each that's other good. more in, in 3D uh, and... Uh, um, yeah, that, that, thank you. Thank you very much for your time.
Well, thank you very much, Lionel.